it's Alicia and welcome back to my channel. I'm sorry if there's a little bit of uh, background noise like a fan going because a fan is going. It's very very hot here. It's very muggy. So fans are going, air condition is on. Sorry about the inconvenience. I just can't go a number of minutes without it because it is very very hot in here and I was just up and down on the stairs and like getting everything together because you know gotta do things and yeah so sorry today's video is going to be my April wrap up so in March I decided that I was going to write out like this goal sheet um, for the month of April and one of my goals was to read 10 books sadly I did not reach that goal. I was kind of bummed, um, but at the same time, I wasn't. I'm hoping that May will be a better month. I'm already off to a little bit of a better start. Fingers crossed, y'all. Fingers crossed that May will be better. But I thought that I would show you what I read in the month of April and give you my thoughts. So... I realize that I'm really awful like giving synopsis and like telling you what a book is about and if that bugs you please let me know so that I can work on it. I'm very very sorry. I'm awful at explaining books like even in person so I don't think it's just like a camera thing. I just gush instead of explain. Does that make sense? I don't know. The first book that I read this month well, reread technically, is Head in the Clouds by Karen Whitmire. I've read this multiple, multiple times. I've talked about this multiple, multiple times. But I figured that it was totally, like, beyond time for me to reread it. And I did. And I even reviewed it on my blog. And you can definitely check that out. It was... Okay, so this might sound a little self-centered but I was really proud of that one I was also a little delirious when I wrote it it was like two o'clock in the morning but there I was sitting there laughing at myself as I was writing this blog <sighs> sometimes my best work is when I'm sleep deprived really it happens quite frequently if I really think about it is that healthy probably not will I continue to do it this, of course, was five out of five stars. If I could give more than five stars, I would, because it's probably my favorite book. Okay, that's really rough for me to say, because I have a lot of favorite books, but it's probably, it is one of my top favorite books, and just rereading it, just everything about it is just all the feels. This is about Adeline Proct Adelaide, Adelaide? The girl, her name is weird, but Adelaide Proctor and Gideon Westcott, and she goes to be a governess, and he is an English sheep farmer, and it's just great, and there's suspense running through it, and listen, you just have to read it. If you read my blog review, and then you read it, awesome. If you just go and pick up the book and read it, awesome. Please let me know if you've read it. I want to hear your opinion. Because I recommend it. Like, through the roof recommend it. So good. The next book that I read was a book from a new-to-me author, and that was A Song Unheard by Miss Rosanna M. White. This was our April book club pick, and I have not read book one yet. Um... But I will be picking that up and reading it because I hate reading series out of order, but... Ugh. Anyways, I'll be picking it up soon. Damn, chill worry. And I used this in my video last week as the S in my name. <sighs> this book was so good, and I just don't understand why I've never read anything by this author before. I have her books on my bookshelf, but I just haven't gotten to reading them now. I'm totally going to. Like, it was so good. I loved the storyline. It was about Willa Forsyth and da -da -da -da, Lucas D. Wilde. 
I loved both of these characters. I totally connected with Willa. I loved Lucas. He was great. And it was cool to read from England and Wales and all over the place. Like, there's just a lot of diversity, or at least for me, it was more diverse than what I normally read. Is that awful? Regardless, it was a 4.5 out of 5 stars, and I will definitely be picking stuff up from this author very soon. The next book that I picked up was also a new to me author, and it is actually a small book, and that is Her Texas Cowboy by Jill Lynn, and this is a love inspired, so it's very small. Um, but this story was so good. I've never read anything by Jill before. But oh my word, I loved her writing style. It was so cute. It was fun. I felt like I was there. I loved both the characters. They're really cute and sweet. Um, this is book three in a series that she wrote. Technically, you don't have to read them in order since most love inspired are standalones. Um, but however, I feel like I use that word all the time anyway. This is about Rachel Maddox, and she's actually the sister of the guy who the first book is about, and she's grown up, and I felt like I was missing a lot of her past in this book, and that's probably because I didn't read the first book. So all in all, you could read them out of order, and you don't have to read the rest of it, but I feel like you would probably enjoy it so much more. I know I would. if you had read it in order. So I do recommend it. It's very cute. It came out in April. Adorable story. Reviewed it on the blog. Um, but definitely if you could I would try to read it in order. It's very cute. It's about Rachel Maddox and Hunter McDermott and it's a used to date or were they best friends? I think they were best friends but didn't date they tried listen it's been a while since I read it it was really cute I loved it loved the story loved the characters and there was a dog in there so I was all for it very sweet no joke kind of teared up at the end of it not gonna lie to you I rated it a 4.5 out of 5 stars and I will be picking up book 1 and 2 at some point if I can find them the next book that I read, I am so proud of myself for reading. I actually buddy read it with a wonderful friend of mine from booktube. Her name is Miss Jessie Dawn. I've talked about her before. I've talked about her channel before. She is the sweetest, sweetest lady. And we decided that we were going to buddy read Unraveling by Sarah Ella. Uh, I read Unblemished in January. And then not gonna lie you need a couple weeks a couple days tops um to get over these stories before you can jump right into the next one unbreakable came out on tuesday there's people who haven't read the trilogy yet and they're just gonna binge read all three of them my mind would explode because my mind already explodes reading them separately and waiting a couple months no I don't think I could binge read them and if I did I'd have to like break it up over the month so that I could get over a book hangover so that I'd be ready for the next month because I would be useless reading wise if I binge read these they're crazy this is a continuance of unblemished uh, we get to see a little bit more about the void and the verity and all the callings and all these people and we get to see some new people. Um, we get to see Ebony a little more in this. And I was really excited. I hope she makes an appearance in book three. It was just really good. If you haven't read the series, I beg of you, pick it up. Even if you don't read fantasy, you don't read YA. I generally don't. But since picking this up, like, I've started a collection of it. It's great. I'm so excited to read Unbreakable. Um, I just, this was, it was such a good book. Um, plot twist, like every 20 pages, I told another friend of mine that, thank God I had somebody to read this with because I would have been stir crazy 
trying to figure out who on earth I could wail and scream and freak out about all the plot twists. Um, so it was very nice to have Jesse there because we would literally, you would know when we were reading it because we would be like sending texts to each other and just be like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, what? Like freaking out. So good. Sarah is so talented. I love this author. I cannot wait to see what else she does. Um, I heard that she's going, uh, she's working on fairy tale retellings. That's going to be her next project and oh, I'm so excited. Anyways, that's off the subject. This was such an amazing book. I rated it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Um, there's a lot of craziness that happens in this and I seriously cannot wait for it to be wrapped up so that we can figure out what on earth happened, who on earth she ends up with, and maybe they'll learn to keep their lips to themselves because kissing just gets you in trouble wherever you go. The next book that I read was A Noble Masquerade by Christy Ann Hunter. And you saw last week I was in the middle of reading this. I, but I went, I think I finished it that night that I had filmed. Um, it was so good. I loved this book. I love Christy. A couple weeks ago I talked about her new release, the new novella that she released. And I explained how I came to reading Christy's writing and how she's kind of close to my heart now and I love her. She's definitely a favorite. But this book was so good. This is about Miranda and she is the first one that we read about and we get to see the siblings a little bit in it. Georgina is pretty much a big factor and Griffith is a big factor. Um, I know a lot of people really hated Georgina in this book and Yes, she was annoying, but it was her character, and I'm very excited to read book two, which is um, about Georgina, and I'm excited to read her redemption story, because she was very much a shallow, shallow young girl, but I mean, everybody was, most people were in this time, so I kind of just let it roll off my back. But this is about Miranda and the Duke of Marshington, Ryland, and ha, love the name and loved the Duke. Oh my word. Um, so my mom actually picked this out for me. She told me I gave her a bunch of books to read over and I said, please help me pick. I don't know what I want to read. And she read the back of this and instantly said, she's like, this one, I don't care. Because a letter that... Miranda wrote she grew up venting out her frustra frustrations to the Duke of Washington, uh, never intending to send them because it was frowned upon for a young woman to send correspondence to young men if they were not related or were not married. So she was never planning on sending them. It started when she was very young and she kept it up. Um, but accidentally it was sent out and the Duke of Washington saw it and he received it and he replied and it was just kind of there. There are a couple other things that are just great. I loved this. I have said and I will continue to say I promise Christy looked into my life when she wrote this series. She looked into my life when she wrote this book. I loved Miranda so much. The, the thought process that she had, totally me. Um, but I love it, and I love that it's a series about siblings, since I'm super close to mine, and I could definitely see multiple aspects and multiple characteristics from my family inside the siblings and inside this family, and I just loved it. I rated this a 4.5 out of 5 stars, and I cannot wait to read books 2 and 3, since I have technically already read book 4. So, the next book that I read in the month of April was Julie by Katherine Marshall and isn't this cover beautiful? The cover for Julie by Katherine Marshall re-released into this gorgeous gorgeous cover and I received the book for um, uh, the blog and to talk about and things but sadly I DNF'd it. Um, 
I got into it and I just, I wasn't a fan of the writing style. I could not get into the story and I was just really struggling and it's really hard for me to DNF a book so you know that it was rough for me. I try to power through but I ended up, nope, no thank you. So this doesn't have a rating. I don't know if I technically considered counting it towards my numbers, but I did want to let you know that I tried reading it this month. Um, it is about Julie Wallace, and they moved to a new town during the Great Depression, and about a newspaper place, a magazine place or something. I'm not sure. It was just... It's a beautiful cover, and it's totally in a time period that I read, but I just, I couldn't get into it, so I had to DNF it, sadly. And the last book that I read in April, I technically finished at, like, midnight, one-ish o'clock on May 1st, but I'm going to count it as April since I did start, it, start reading it in April, and I would have finished, but I got busy at my job, so I had to stop for a couple minutes, and that is Last Chance Wife by Jeanette Foreman. The cover is gorgeous. It is a love-inspired historical, and it is about Winifred Sattler and Ewan? I think it's Ewan Burke. Winifred has been a mail-order bride six times, and it's never worked out. And she comes to this family friend. She goes in, and she finds a ad in the newspaper for another mail-order for uh it's under a false name, under Mr. Businessman, you know, like the, what are they called? Oh, I can't remember. Oh, bummer. If you know what I'm talking about, let me know the correct term. And she decides on a whim to respond, so they start up this correspondence, and it's actually Ewan, who is her boss for a while at this mining territory in this mining camp. And it was just really cute to see them fall for each other in person and then fall for each other on paper and the difference and they it was just it was really cute I loved seeing the correspondences and because it's written out in letter form in some areas and it was just really really cute I loved it I rated it a four out of five stars and I believe this is the first book I've read by Jeanette Foreman I think it might be her first book but I could be completely and utterly wrong so if I am, forgive me. She sent me the copy to review on the blog, and that review is up today. And it released on May 1st, also on Tuesday. May has been a crazy month for book releases. May 1st was a day for book releases. But it released then, and it was so cute, and I definitely, def definitely recommend it. I wish I had it in paper, but every time I went to Walmart, I was, like, checking days before, because normally they have it early. But they didn't have it, sadly. Um, so I don't have a physical copy yet, but I will be purchasing one when I see it in stores. So if I count Julie, I read a total of seven books, including my ebook. Um, but if I do not count Julie, then I read six. So overall, it was an okay month. Um, I was four short from my goal, but that's okay. I really enjoyed the books that I read this month. And I'm excited to read a ton in May. I'm very, very excited. So these are the books that I read this month. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing what I read in the month of April. If you have read any of these books, please let me know in the comments section below. If you, or if any of these are on your TBR, let me know. I'd love to know. What did you read in April? Hmm? 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 Do you have any parades books that you're planning on reading on May and have you read Sarah Ellis trilogy yet because hello so good mm. I hope you guys have had a great week and I hope you guys have a great weekend you can read a ton of blogs on these books because really most of the blogs that I did this month were about this book these books hmm well the blog link is for the love of Christian fiction .com in the description. And you can also follow me on Instagram for the love of Christian fiction. My other links are in the description box below. And I think that's it. 
I'll see you guys next week. Bye!